Mushrooms are growing directly on the trunk of the wood. As you can see, it's rotting and using the nutrients of that. Um, I'm after the honey fungus. I'm very interested in finding more out about, but it has a yellow stem. So I'm going to say this isn't the honey fungus and it's a sulphur tuft, which unfortunately is poisonous. Some mushrooms act in symbiosis with the trees to give them nutrients in exchange for water. Some are a bit more damaging than that or a bit more greedy like the mushroom that's involved with ash dieback it takes more than it gives back and therefore it kills the trees what we have here and there is a birch polypore named because polypore is many hold. It's a bracket fungus that grows directly onto the tree. Although we're not after this mushroom for use in cooking, traditionally it has been used in a number of different ways. It can be used in the same way that a leather strop can be used. You can also make paper from it and people traditionally always dried these and they used them as a form of tinder to get their fires going. It can also be used to just put the last sharpening edge on a knife when dried. That's why it's called the razor strop fungus. And also if you cut it, it has a, an antiseptic smell. Um, people of old reputedly um, used it as a form of poultice. Um, what we've got here is a little patch of puffballs, edible. Not to everyone's taste, they're a little bit spongier. What I'm going to do is cut one off and see if it's still in its edible state. What we need and we're looking for is for it to be white all the way through and firm. There we go. If I cut this one in half, well, they are a different texture altogether. As you can see, they don't have gills and that one's still young enough to eat. Here we have an older example of the same mushroom. How it reproduces is it turns all of its insides into spores and the reason it's called a puffball is it releases its spores into the wind like so. So the whole of the inside turns into a dry powdery mass that is now releasing millions and millions and millions of spores. Looks like you're doing magic. <laughs> A lot of it is magic. It's just one of those little things that's fascinating in nature to children, I think. Yeah, it's great, especially when you get big ones up to football size sometimes. The mushroom world is a massive body of different organisms um, and is still yielding um, important new medical findings. People are still doing research and still coming up with new remedies for some of our modern diseases. It's so important that the forests are left to do their own things and that these mushrooms continue to grow.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 